I agree. I like that sincerity. That's just awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kimberly Caligari Gourier. I'm 46 years old. I'm an obstetrician gynecologist and I'm going to try to help you get there. I'm from California. I spent my early years in Compton, California until I was in fourth grade. Um, at that time, in the six, late 60s and 70s, Los Angeles was a city in transition, the greater Los Angeles uh, area. Um, and when I say in transition, I mean that the city was going from, many of the neighborhoods were going from largely Caucasian to black to a little bit later on Hispanic. So when I lived in Compton, California, um, it was a time when it was transitioning from a white neighborhood to a black neighborhood. Um, and the Compton that many people know now um, with lots of gang activity is not the Compton that was back in that day. There were, most homes had a swimming pool. It was more of a middle class existence. And then the neighborhood over the years has really changed. Um, after starting in fifth grade, we moved to Carson, California, which was a little bit of a step up economically, still a middle class neighborhood with manicured lawns, nice families. Um, and now I am married to my college sweetheart. We have two teenage girls. Um, I live in Burbank, California, which is a suburb of Los Angeles. And um, Chris and I met at Stanford. so. In elementary school, I attended multiple schools, and not because we moved a lot. I, I lived in two homes, like we discussed, and had a very stable um, upbringing. But I think the reason I attended so many elementary schools is because my parents really were on a quest to try to find the best schools available. Um, I started kindergarten at a little school called First Baptist, which I loved. And then I moved on to St. Paul Lutheran for, I believe, first and second grade. Um, I later went to a school called Lincoln Elementary, which was my first public school. And the reason I went there is it, it was in a, um, a little bit of a uh, socioeconomically downtrodden neighborhood, but it was near my mom's job at Martin Luther King Hospital, which was a huge new hospital, a beacon of hope, where um, the underserved population was to be served and she was the administrative dietitian there. So she found the best school in that area so that we could be close to our extended family and close to her job for pickup and for any emergencies. And that actually was a fantastic school. What I remember about Lincoln Elementary School was um, the reading lab and it really had a great impact on me. Um, after that, when we moved to Carson, then I went to neighborhood school for a year, Leapwood. And I remember having already had great success um, in elementary school, but having to prove myself over and over every time we moved. And so I had to test into some of the gifted classes and sort of show people all over again that you know I was motivated and talented as a student. I moved again in sixth grade to St. Albert, so that was interesting because it was a Catholic school and I'm not Catholic. So learning the rituals was a little bit intimidating at mass um, and getting used to the very strict um, uh, traditions of the nuns in the Catholic school um, was made for an interesting sixth grade year. From seven through 12 then I was um, stable. I had finally gotten into a magnet school. Um, this was a time in Los Angeles where volunteer busing was um, a big deal. Um, so we were bused from our home in Carson to a school in the middle of Los Angeles. It was an hour and a half bus ride each way. Um, but my mother felt that it was so important for us to get the education that that school had to offer. And to this day, it's called LACES now, but it's Los Angeles Center for Enriched Studies. It was a magnet school and it was really a, an experiment on bringing kids 
from around Los Angeles of different socioeconomic backgrounds, racially diverse campus, and sort of see how it worked. And it really wound up being a fantastic experience. From Los Angeles Center for Enriched Studies, I went on to Stanford University. Um, it's interesting because at that time in 1985 when I started college, Stanford was the number one university. And um, I remember people being surprised. Um, again, you know, having to prove myself to people um, didn't even see us at that time. When I took the PSAT in ninth grade, the college counselor, an African American man, came up to me and said, do you know how well you did on the PSAT? And at that point, I think I made a decision that, okay, I'm not going to stop surprising people with my motivation and my ability to do well, so I'm just going to enjoy surprising them. If you want to be surprised that an African-American female student can perform well, well, I'll surprise you then. And it sort of became um, sort of my mantra that I am not going to allow anybody who had contact with me to ever again say that a person who looks like me can't achieve. Um, they will at least have known one person who could do it. Um, and from Stanford, I majored in, at Stanford, I majored in biology. At Stanford, it's called biological sciences. And I always knew I wanted to be a doctor, so I went on from Stanford to the University of California, San Diego. It was very important to me to attend a UC, University of California School for Medical School, because everybody told me, the UCs are fantastic med schools and you do not want to come out with you know, a half million dollars in loan before you've even, loans before you've even started your career. So that didn't mean a lot to me at the time, but I just knew I wanted to get into a UC medical school and it turns out that it was great advice.